I think there's been quite a drastic change in education, right? Historically, education has been one of the areas that uh, has been least uh, least amenable to change. Uh, it has adopted technology the least of most other industries, right? Many industries have been completely um, revolutionized, completely um, uh, transformed by technology, education not so much. And I think what this uh, COVID pandemic has done is to kind of jolt it out of its uh, inertia and uh, forced it to uh, um, adapt because um, it's an external shock, right? Um, internally, you know, within the industry, things were going well. Everybody's, you know, uh, doing what they're supposed to do. And uh, given that it impacts so many people, whether it is students, whether it is um, uh, teachers, whether it is parents, there are so many people that are impacted. Change is hard, right? When there are so many people involved, change is hard. And so uh, you kind of needed this external shock uh, to, uh, to make uh, at least the realization that things need to change happen. Has all change been good? Absolutely not, right? So people were very underprepared uh, to deal with a situation like this. And we have to look at uh, each segment differently, right? So the situation is very different for young kids, people who are, you know, in the uh, KG to school, uh, K-12, school going age, and then students who are in college, uh, that's different. And then adults, right? So we have multiple categories of learners and things have impacted, been impacted differently for different learners. I think the worst uh, impacted are the young kids, right? So, you know, because, um, you know, they, for first of all, in the education process, um, the interaction and, you know, learning uh, that's outside of the core subjects is much more important for the younger kids, right? So they're just, you know, growing and evolving as individuals. And so that is being taken away. And they also don't, it's very hard to expect them to sit in front of a computer and, and concentrate for a long period of time. So online learning has really worked very poorly for young kids. Uh, for older kids, it's been quite different. In fact, um, in when it comes to higher education, I think uh, what we are finding is that uh, there are a lot of merits to online learning that can happen, right? So online learning, for example, gives you a lot more information and data on the learning process itself, right? So um, historically, there's very little insight that one gets into what is happening with the learners, right? So even at IIT Madras, you know, the only real feedback that faculty get about student learning is through the exams that are conducted, right? And I'm sure you know this, that there are half your classmates are sitting in the back benches and basically, mm -hmm. you know, either on their mobile phones or, or uh, you know, or, uh, you know, you know what they do. I'm not going to say here what they do, but, you know, we've all been there. Uh, and and really, it's only exams and where people are basically cramming the night before and all of that, right? Whereas in online learning, you actually get to know at all times what's really going on. So the insight that you get into it and the real-time feedback that faculty can get as to what students are following, what they are not following, and all of that is possible. If you use the right technology, all of that is possible. And Great Learning has been an online learning provider now for seven and a half years. And we've been doing online learning for a long time. We've delivered more than 50 million hours of learning online. <clears throat> and so we, you know, we have a deep understanding of how good quality, high quality learning can happen. And so we've seen this, you know, the kind of insight that we have into the learning process uh, is, is actually revolutionary, right? And now, uh, academic institutions that are willing to do that, are willing to invest in technology can have the same benefit. So I feel that higher education can definitely benefit from this. More technology is getting adopted by the progressive institutions um, globally, right? So on, you know, this, this shift from offline to adopting more technology to doing more things online for higher education is actually a good thing. And I do believe that even when things go back to normal, whatever that new normal might be, uh, it is going to be more blended. I think there is going, you know, online learning will continue to remain a part of higher education. Now, when you come to professional learning for adults, you know, working professionals, the realization uh, has already been coming in the last five years that you have to keep learning because the world is changing so fast. World of business, nature of work is changing so fast that you have to keep learning. So continuous learning was becoming a new normal even before the pandemic. 
if anything what this pandemic has done is put more of a spotlight on that right because you know when when jobs become scarce right you know uh, people look to differentiate themselves even more or people have to differentiate so they are and it also gave them time to learn and add new skill sets to themselves so more people are actually doing that and all the online learning platforms have been used more during the pandemic and the realization for people that we need to keep doing that earlier it was happening to the early adopters and 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 you know small numbers of people now it is actually at a much larger scale and that behavior is here to stay that's not going to change people's realization that they have to keep learning to stay relevant is going to be here so that's how i i see education evolving k12 i think is the hardest and there i think things will go back to normal um you know can technology be adopted there yes but not for the core learning right the core learning still the face to face interaction interaction between students is super important in higher education i think it can play a huge role and we will have a blended model there and for working professionals i think it will be completely online just the sheer convenience is too compelling there for it not to be online being online means that you get access to a lot more resources so today you know there is there are resources all over the world all over the place there's content there are um, you know uh, simulations there are um, you know online labs there's all of these things that people have suddenly discovered the fact is they existed even before right now a lot more people discovered them you know so we have for example a resource called great learning academy okay where there are um, now over 180 courses that are available to learners for free right these are high quality you know and and so you know we have 6 lakh students that are studying there and that's completely for free similarly you know about other resources as well so people have discovered all of these um, and it's not just about you know content you also can actually work on problems you can participate in hackathons you know you can engage with other people so all of these things can then can happen online so i think in terms of a mega trend you know using all of these online resources that is definitely a big trend and that is going to be an integral part of um, of higher education going forward as well even faculty are realizing see when you don't have the ability to be in front of your class you know and have that sage on the stage kind of setting right then you also have to be innovative you have to find resources so faculty themselves have di- discovered many resources which they are going to continue to use why because it makes them more effective it creates mm-hmm. faster feedback loops in you know so for faculty to understand are students actually following are they understanding you know and there are new ways of creating and and conducting assessments more frequent assessments so the feedback loop between learning and then assessments so that you know which can tell you whether the learning happened or not so it can happen much faster with technology you know in the in the uh, traditional world you know exams paper you know conducted and the teacher has to evaluate them that was a lot of work when you use technology those things can be streamlined much much more right so so i think use of technology in higher education uh, in professional learning that's definitely a mega trend that's here to stay um use of resources is here to stay uh, learners collaborating online you know and engaging with much larger ecosystems than their own their class around them right that is a, a trend that's here to stay right Because, you know today people can work on problems from anywhere so our students uh, you know for example great learning students work on problems from kaggle right they work on um, uh, problems that have been put up by um many different research organizations right you know so indian government itself conducts the smart india hackathon where they are sourcing problems from many many places and students are working on all of these right this is all possible because we are embracing technology we are doing things digitally right and all of that has just gotten um, you know uh, accelerated by what we are seeing in the pandemic so that's definitely you know another a mega trend that has happened so in general people's comfort with doing things online with learning online with being tested online with collaborating online all of those things are behaviors um, that are here to stay you know one of the things that technology is enabling and what what we are seeing today is that um, more people can now have access to the best faculty okay so one that's one of the things that we do at great learning right you know we recognize that the 
the truly amazing faculty are few and far in between in the world right and they are generally at the best institutions and so great learning is able to take the impact and the magic of these amazing faculty and extend that to many many more people that would have never gotten access to these faculty right so historically our top institutions have been defined by exclusivity right you know you know how hard it is to get into one of the iits i know yeah. you know we are the we are the lucky ones who went to those institutions and but we know you know all the people who did not right so top institutions have been uh, defined by exclusivity whereas uh, online learning and technology enabled learning is actually at least the way great learning we think about it is that we want to make it inclusive so everybody who has the willingness to learn who wants to learn who is willing to put in the effort to learn and who meets the basic eligibility criteria should have access to amazing faculty should have access to amazing learning experiences and high quality learning experiences should have access to excellence right mm. and and uh, and that's really what is is being made possible right now you know so we do a program with iit madras a program in software engineering for cloud blockchain and iot and so the professor you know um, he's an amazing professor and now he's able to actually reach out to thousands of people iit madras mm -hmm. has been a pioneer in uh, starting the bsc program the online bsc program for the first time in india right same thing iit madras faculty are now going to be able to uh, reach out and 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 impact you know thousands of people lakhs of people right so so that's really the 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 big shift that's happening so so i think students can now actually aspire learners can now aspire to learn from the very best teachers and that's what uh, edtech platforms uh, you know great learning and others are actually enabling so we have uh, partnerships with top institutions like stanford mit iit madras um and uh, and you know many others and through those we are able to uh and you know enable lakhs of students to actually learn from these amazing faculty you know and that that impact that the faculty have is magical so i don't believe for a second that faculty will get replaced no they are not going to get replaced right you know in fact the good faculty will become even more valuable and there will be uh pressure on the um you know average faculty or the um you know the moderate faculty who haven't been putting as much effort uh into their teaching to actually do more and to become more engaging to to actually become better teachers so i think we'll actually have the good teachers really shining and the not so good teachers feeling the pressure mm -hmm. to actually become better teachers so overall i think it's very good for the education ecosystem mm -hmm. and as far as students are concerned i think they should aspire to learn from the best and uh, and basically not settle for whatever little access they have today but you know take the initiative to look out and to look for how can they um, learn from the best you know one of the amazing things about uh, what we do at great learning is the inspiring stories that we keep hearing almost on a daily basis you know uh, given that we engage with lakhs of people there are so many amazing stories that we come across of people um you know really overcoming all the odds that are against them really overcoming the hurdles that are there and and actually you know shining uh, so as i mentioned before right the the number of people historically that have been uh, privileged and have had access to high quality education is very few and most people you know have had to go through their entire lives without ever engaging in or experiencing excellence in in learning and that's what's changing right now and that's the most amazing thing um, and the most fulfilling thing about what we do uh, is that we are able to reach out uh, to these folks and and not just in india but all over the world and to give them our provide them opportunities by which they are able to transform their careers transform their lives you know to give you a few examples um you know a recurring theme that happens uh, and this is something that we uh, have seen before with multiple people you know but specifically you know um one person i can talk think about uh, is is a lady called sonakshi and you know many other people are like this where they've taken a break 
uh, for maternity and you know that kind of got them off the corporate um, you know professional life and so and then of course they fall behind and they struggle to get back into the workforce that results in um, lower uh, self confidence and it becomes kind of a self fulfilling self fulfilling prophecy uh, and so we seen that our you know by doing our uh, our, our programs folks like sonakshi are able to actually get back and get into very very aspirational jobs and um, and that is is extremely satisfying uh, i can think of another example you know where um, you know people who have had gaps in their careers you know who have had gaps in their careers for health reasons for family reasons they had to take care of their parents you know for all these people who have again uh, kind of got um, you know for for good reasons derailed from their careers are able to now learn new things um, and actually um, come back so you know we have had a learner called ravi uh, who um, had this issue he had a career gap he was quite depressed but then you know was able to learn and then get himself a fantastic job and uh, and is now completely back on track um some and uh, in some other cases like there is another person called nikhil who uh, suffered with um, lack of confidence because he's from a small town did not have good communication and we know so many people are like that they were able to learn you know some very good skills and uh, and and you know get a great job and completely transform their life um, and even outside of india you know so i know about another, one of our learners from uh, actually iraq and you know she had a very difficult time you know even getting access to the internet and she was working in a very low paid job but had access to a computer at her work where she did one of her courses managed to actually complete it without her employer even like knowing about it and uh, after completing it she was able to change to a very aspirational data science job and that you know completely changed her uh, you know compensation profile and and her and and her lifestyle and this was in 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 iraq where you know that you know the rights of women are not the same as everywhere else um and so there are so many stories like that you know uh, where people are able to actually empower themselves with the learning that is available to them and use that to completely transform their lives you know i mean we have literally thousands and thousands of uh, such stories that uh, you know that really uh, motivate us the other day we got an email uh, from this person who um, you know we don't even actually know where he is from but he wrote to us um, saying that uh, you know he said uh people like him who are very very underprivileged uh, would never have a- had access to the kind of courses that we have on uh, great learning academy and you know he wrote in very broken english but he said that you know uh, please don't ever take this away because these are the only resources people like him have had and he has really benefited from it and you know the way he wrote it it really really you know touched us um and we are able to, we are seeing that even folks like this who are doing jobs who are actually like from difficult situation are, are able to do amazing work the kind of projects that our students are able to do at the end of their programs the kind of capstone projects they are able to do uh, is actually quite remarkable you know in the last 12 months uh, we've had 33 papers come out of our capstone projects um you know our students four of our students presented at the iim bangalore conference analytics conference last year and even one of them got the best paper award right there are startups that have come out of these capstone projects somebody created like a spotify for carnatic music you know indian classical music right uh, somebody else created a um, uh, a tool that actually uh, predicts uh, aircraft maintenance requirements you know this is a team that came out uh, from spicejet and they created it um, and now spicejet actually paid them 10 lakhs for it you know so there are so many stories like this i can keep going on and on and on um, you know but it's actually really really rewarding to see people have this kind of transformational outcomes and then change their lives just you know and are you know being able to empower them to do that right so that's the it's a very very satisfying part of what we do for iit madras actually has been remarkably uh, progressive and innovative when it comes to embracing technology and when it comes to embracing 
um, you know, the, uh, the disruptions and the changes that are happening in education. Right. So, you know, IIT Madras was always a fantastic institution when it came to education and research and all of that. But it's actually so awesome to see it embrace, uh, you know, the changes and the disruptions that are happening in education as well. Right? And it's not something that you would typically expect from, you know, a very old and traditional institution. So that's actually wonderful. Uh, so I think that's, you know, that makes us very proud and, and uh, excited to be partnering uh, and collaborating with, uh, with IIT Madras in general. And uh, so far, that's been going very well. Our program uh, has been received very well, and we look forward to doing more uh, with, uh, with IIT Madras and to actually uh, magnify and amplify the impact that, you know, it already has to a lot more people. Uh, and of course, you know, IIT Madras Alumni uh, Association, uh, I was very, very pleasantly surprised to hear how much they do, actually, you know, the, the vibrancy with which they're engaging with the alumni community, the amount of um, uh, work that they're doing was actually quite uh, remarkable. And so, um, so we are very excited to, to associate and collaborate with that. Um, and of course, the next thing is that, um, you know, both of our missions, there is a significant alignment, right? So we want, we want uh, you know, to impact people and empower people through continuous learning. Right, I think IIT, that is one of the goals of IIT uh, Madras IIT Alumni Association. That is our mission, right? So there is a lot of alignment in that. Uh, and, and so we are excited about partnering with uh, the association for that as well. And then lastly, I think, you know, alumni from IIT Madras, um, you know, while I went to IIT Bombay, I think I know, you know, are all in very, very good positions where they can actually spread this message of continuous learning and lifelong learning. I think, um, you know, they themselves would be lifelong learners and they should actually spread the message and, uh, uh, and, and encourage um, all the people in their uh, spheres of influence to become lifelong learners. Uh, and that is needed, honestly, in the world we are in today, that is absolutely needed. And so, um, you know, so to the extent that we can uh, motivate them to do that, uh, you know, by sharing uh, stories that we encounter I think that's a that's a win-win for everyone, right? And uh, so I think we we um, I think through the alumni and through this uh, the association, we just want to further spread the message uh, of uh, continuous learning and um, you know everybody now being able to learn from the best faculty, from the best uh, institutions, and and in some sense, kind of spreading the message of democratization of quality education. You know, so I think quality education should basically be accessible to everyone, right? And mm -hmm. I think that's something that together we can uh, further reinforce. No, I think, uh, you know, for all the students, um, you know, they are in that phase of their life where learning is kind of the major focus area, right? So those of them that have uh, access to good faculty, you know, should recognize that they are fortunate uh, and try to make the most of that opportunity and, uh, you know, not look back later and say that, uh, oh, we could have, you know, I know so many people, my own batchmates and others from IIT, uh, you know, who, who 10 years later say, I wish I had, you know, used that time yeah. better. I wish I had done this. I wish I had done that. So, so uh, you know, well, just recognize that, you know, you have uh, access to these things right now and make the most of that time. You know, and I don't mean just in terms of academics, even all the other things that you have access to, right? You know, uh, I, mean, I, I mean, it's un my life completely changed because of IIT, right? Like the kind of opening up of my, of my mind of what is possible, what people can do, right? Those things were mind blowing. Uh, and so for students uh, at IIT, of course, you know, they, they, they have all of that. And I think they should recognize the value of that instead of complaining about the food in the mess. You know, <laughs> and you, I can assure you, you will get better food later in your life, right? So don't worry about the food in a mess that much, you know, as long as you don't get sick and you survive, that's good enough. Uh, you know, just enjoy all the other things that are there and make, make every day count. Uh, and all the other students, you know, just know that you have access to resources today. You have access to the best faculty in the world. Um, and as long as you want to learn, there are avenues for you to learn. So you know, so just make a habit of, of learning from the best and, and doing the best for yourself. So I want to wish everybody um, all the very best. Mm -hmm.